So now looking at my results, a couple of things I want to point out to you. Of course, you get the title of the article up front with a link to the article. You get author information, publication date, the journal it was published in, or if you're looking at newspapers and magazines, you'll see the name of the newspaper magazine where it was published in. And then you get a few sentences here that show your keyword search. You'll also notice below a couple of links. This is for details and this is for full text access to the article. For number two here, you'll notice there's abstract details, full text to the article, and also full text PDF. Another feature is the preview drop down here. When you click on this, it gives you a brief summary of the article, as well as some subject terms that are addressed in the article. You can select one of these, clicking on it, and it will do a new search in the database for you based on this subject term. You'll also notice that there are some highlighted terms. These are based on my filters because I selected Border Patrol as a subject term and I selected location in San Francisco, California. That is highlighted for me because of my selections on my filters. This is really useful because if you don't have time to read through the whole article as you're doing your research, this abstract is basically a summary of the article and it gives you an overview of the article contents and provides a really good idea as to whether this is an article that you want to use for your research or not. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse this. Now there is a difference between full text and full text PDF. For both of these, you're getting the entire article. The only thing that's different is how it looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on full text just to show you what that looks like. So you'll see here, you have all of the pertinent information about the article listed at the top. You have the abstract, and then here below is the full text. This is the entire article. All of the text is listed here. The reason this is full text is because it is actually embedded in the database shell. So all of the text is within this frame. And you go all the way to the bottom, here are the references and some information about the article listed there as well. Now with the full text PDF option, if I select on that, it will also give you the full article. The only difference is that this is what the article looked like when it was published in the actual print journal. So this is what it looked like at its publication. And so you'll see here, this is the layout. It's still the same content. It's still the same article. It just shows you everything laid out the way that it was when it was originally published. I prefer the PDF version myself, but it's really up to you, whatever one you want to use. The other option you'll notice here is abstract details. If I click on this, it will provide me with that general information about the article, a summary, and the subject terms that I can also select and conduct new searches with, and then details about the article. I'm going to go back to my PDF, PDF full text and show you some of the tools over here on the right hand side. So you'll notice the tools for this document are on the top right hand corner. For those of you who have used ProQuest in the past, you'll notice that they have updated their interface a little bit. Uh, it looks a little bit more modern and they've added a few more options as well. So the first option is to download this PDF. Uh, another way to download the PDF, which I would recommend, is within the document itself, you'll see here there is a download button or feature. I actually recommend using this one instead of this one because this is connected to your browser and this is through the database. So this one tends to have a higher chance of success. 
and giving you exactly what you want. Same thing for the print feature. Uh, I recommend going through the PDF print option rather than the database print option. But you can print the article. Another tool here is the citation button. When you click on citation, you'll notice that the citation style that first pops up, the default is MLA 7th edition. I'm not sure why ProQuest does this because the most recent edition of MLA is the 8th edition. So you wanna make sure that you select this and select the citation style that you want and if you are working with MLA, make sure you are selecting the 8th edition. Once you select that, it will update and generate here a preview in the box for you. You can copy and paste from here, but as always, you want to double check your citations. These citations are only about 90 to 95% accurate, so you wanna make sure there aren't any mistakes and when you paste this into your document, you will still need to do the work of formatting, making sure you're doing them in alphabetical order with hanging indents, double spaced, uh, whatever needs to be in italics, is italicized, etc. But about 90% of the work is done for you here. I might go ahead and click done. Now, although you can download the article and you can print the article as well, the method that I recommend for ProQuest is the email function for saving this article. The benefit to email is that it allows you, as you'll see up here, to include the full text, but it also includes a citation for you. So I'm gonna leave that selected. And if you do want the citation included in the email, where it says bibliography here, you wanna make sure to check off this box. Again, make note of the default. The default here is MLA 8th edition. So that works for me, but if you wanna change a different to a different citation style from this list, make sure to look through and find the one that you need. These are all optional things to include in the email. I don't need any of these, so I'm gonna leave those blank. And then you're gonna type in your email address. It also asks you to include your name. This is particularly import important if you're sending this email to someone else. But if it's just coming to you, then you can type in whatever you want, such as me or your initials, anything you wanna put in there. Now for subject, the default is always going to say your pre ProQuest research. If you send many of these emails, then you'll have many emails saying your ProQuest research, which can be confusing. So I usually recommend deleting that subject heading and putting in the first few words of your article title. Or if you've looked at the summary, you might wanna type in a few words describing the summary of the article. Whatever helps you distinguish the articles in your email. The message is optional, and this is again going to you or to whatever email you've put here. So it really just depends who's receiving it and what type of message you wanna send. And then you wanna click continue. It will give you a confirmation message and you could close this. When you go into your email, it will say that it is from no reply. And you see here the subject line is exactly what I typed in. The article has no name, but when I open up my email, as I requested, the full article is included in the email. And at the very bottom of the email is the MLA 8th citation. That no name file are just images that kind of get attached to your email, but those are irrelevant. You don't really need those. The rest of the stuff that you need is embedded here in your email. Now I selected full text. As you see here, it says full text and that's why it was embedded in the body of my email. 
if I want it attached as a PDF, because this article happens to have an original PDF format, I can do that by selecting this second option. I'm still including my citation in MLA 8th, and I'm also keeping my email. All the rest of the stuff is the same. I'm going to click continue, and I have my confirmation. Here is my second email. And when I open this up, I will have the full text within the body of the email again, but now included at the very end is the PDF that I requested. So it really depends how you want to receive the article to your email. It's up to you to pick whether you want the original file format PDF or if you want it embedded in the body of your email. It's up to you, uh, but it also depends on what's available for the article. Continuing with your tools here, there is an all options button here. If you click on that, it will give you everything that you can do with this article. You can save it to your personalized ProQuest account if you have one created or want to create one. You can include it to your Google Drive, uh, but this will only be the PDF version of the article. No citation will be included with that. If you want to save it to your OneDrive, same thing. Uh, if you happen to have subscriptions to any of these citation export tools, you can use those. And then these are other format options on how to export the document. I also want to make note here on the right hand side are related items. So these are articles that are very similar to or uh, along the same lines as the article that you're looking at here. And you can select one of these and it will take you to that article. So I'm going to go back to my search results by clicking here, back to results. Now that I'm back in my results, the last thing I want to point out is how to send multiple documents at the same time. So ProQuest has these little check boxes in front of each article. So let's say I've looked through these titles and looked through the abstracts and I've decided that I really want these three articles for my research. I don't have time to read them all right now, but I will at a later time. So I'm going to click off this checkbox right here. You'll see that they turn blue. And if I scroll up to the top, there is a folder here that now has the number three to indicate these three articles. This is a temporary folder that ProQuest provides for you for this instance where you want to save or send multiple articles at once. So if I click on this folder, it will open up and show me the three articles that I have selected. And over here on the right are the tools that I can use for the three articles. So I can delete, save to my research, I can cite them. So for example, if I click on the citation button, it will generate a works cited page with all three articles. And I can download this or I can email it or I can print it. This is a new feature of ProQuest. It's really cool. So if you know for sure you're going to be using these articles as resources, this is a great tool that you can use. Again, this is only about 90% accurate, so you always want to double check this and make sure your formatting matches the rules for your citation style. And then you can email them as a group. So you'll see three items are selected. Again, you select the type of file that you want to send with the citations or without. All of the rest the same, and then you send those off. Now, they should arrive as separate emails, but that varies. Sometimes they get lumped together in one email. Also, if the files are too large to go through your email, so it does tell you here it has to be under 7 megabytes then it will send you a link instead to come back to ProQuest to access the article that way. So just keep that in mind. Uh, always look at the file size or how large 
the document is, if it's many pages, then it will be a larger file size. And if you're sending too many articles at once, then your file size will definitely be too large to send all together. And I'm going to close that. And that's it. And I'm going to click back. The last thing I want to discuss in ProQuest is modifying your search terms.